Hello, folks, Papu.com here, and Arne Pulse at the mic as usually bring you some standard action after a bit of a break. Uh, this time it's uh, a small tournament, uh, just casual playing in the bar. And uh, on the right side of the screen is my brew of the four color tokens based upon Altar of the Brood. And then on the left is uh, Teamer White, what I call it, or four color dragons. Basically, there are different ways to call this. So, I was hoping to get some of my archives going, but couldn't quite do it yet, and I was trying out different settings, so as a result I'm able to bring this video to you guys and a couple more, uh, showcasing this new brew, which is kind of bit odd. I, I really like it, but it's so... Uh, inconsistent uh, as it turns out as a result of that day when I was playing the deck I didn't get to play test against uh, all the tire 1 decks uh, it was pretty odd to be playing against uh, Atarkar a couple of times but oh well um, I get to play against this and Asper Dragon so Next up I will upload the match against Esper Dragons, it was also quite interesting I think, as is this one. So he was on the play here, Cinderblade turn 1, tapped of course, my mana base is quite slow, sometimes as well, Smoldering Marsh turn 1, this way if I get a basic I can uh, cast one of the two drops um, next turn either Tormented Voice or one of the uh, black two drops um, he's representing pretty oddly here but he's just saving up some time so uh, Windswap here for playing saying the Reto Claw Mystic so he could potentially cast a Wanderer next turn and that will be a huge liability it doesn't matter a whole lot what I would be casting here I'm kind of quite far behind uh, I cast the altar here I think over one of the uh, ally 2 drops I think my hope was to draw into Abzan Charm because Mardu Charm doesn't really kill the Wanderer. Uh, so tapped um, tapped Green White Duel, mill him for one, passing the turn back. You can't quite see the graveyard, but we would see all the action going on. Flood is, uh, oh not Flood is Strength, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it is Flood is Strength. So, cracking that, getting the tree on. He gets green and red from Mystic and the, uh, and the Duel, and I think Island from the Strand, so. Uh, the Wanderer entered with four counters, so it's a 6-6 six, six Trump all Vigilance, dude. And that is really threatening it for me. Tormented Voice basically trying to dig for that stupid absent charm to deal with the 6-6. Six, six. After Cyborg I get some more removal for that sort of nonsense. But yet again... The, um, sometimes the deck cooperated, sometimes not. Tormented Voice pitching another Tormented Voice because of what that... I wouldn't have that much time to dig one more turn or something. <clears throat> so it's warm, so mill him for one more. 
Uh, I couldn't quite see what was it. Some red cards. I think it was another land. I'm not sure what he milled there. Um, what did Foot Hills coming down? He has access to five mana here. Oh yeah, I played another Elter. So that's why he milled actually to that turn. Mantis Rider coming down, hitting face for a bunch here with the, the with the whole team. I'm down to nine and uh before sideboard this deck is not really well suited to come with this kind of board position. Yeah, cool, like you get to mill two after my land drop and then unified fronts with converge four, so he gets to mill eight cards. But that doesn't matter a whole lot. Because even if I um go like block mystic with one token and then uh block with three the winder to soak some damage so that will be still six. So I'll go down to three. Which is still not great. And I don't know how to win from there. Ah I think my hope was to um get to untap play the Thief Land and Planner outburst him. Because the deck does run a couple of uh, outburst main deck to combat this kind of situations. My draws were kind of slow, but at the same time, not the worst possible sequence for me. I suppose uh, turn to Mystic into turn 3 uh, 6 6. That kind of made it rather tough. And the haste creature in the form of the rider. On the other hand, it could have been. Well, it couldn't have been a mana dork into rhino. Although some people were advocating mystic as a two drop of choice in absent aggro. But now they're most likely gonna play the new 2 3 death touch creature. Which I thought about playtesting in modern, but couldn't. Okay, he didn't get Jeskai Charm, but he gets technically the uh, Knuckle Blades. Which I'm forced to block. Luckily, it doesn't have Trample, but the Wanderer does. So I was th uh, thinking that, like, okay, I would be left with two tokens. And then, even if I block here the Wanderer. Still tramples for four plus well tramples for four plus the uh, rider so that's seven I go down to two unless something happens and I think that's what ended up happening I went down to two after the attacks so I could still crack a fetch to cast the outburst for example. I could still crack a fetch for outburst. But I think I simply couldn't draw the outburst. Yeah. I think I had the lands in my hand, but yeah. Couldn't draw one of the two outbursts. Too many big dudes at the same time. So my Mardu Charms and Absent Charms didn't do quite a bit. But bear with me, after sideboards we become less cute and more streamlined in terms of combating aggro and beatdown decks, so... Um, now I'm just shuffling here the whole sideboard in and then trying to figure out the 15. So as far as I remember in this matchup and in this kind of uh, beatdown matchups... Uh, like this and absent aggro and a few similar decks maybe some Mardu mid-range prob uh, well probably even the dark Jeskai I think I just take out all the cuteness and bring in um, 
a combination of discard and removal and uh, some card advantage because I have a bunch of um, big drops which are too cute and in this matchup I don't have really that much time uh, so I ended up bringing in two uh, out outpost sieges so that I have a card that um, at worst can draw me cards and in some interesting situations it can help me to uh, clean the board by um, champing with a bunch of tokens uh, so that I get to ping for each of them I don't remember which mode was it cons or dragons so I normally just uh, specify the uh, the mo uh, the description of the mode and not the name or just look at the card and this way I don't make a mistake by accidentally naming the wrong mode so yeah, uh, checking if everything is in place so I took out uh, a lot of big life gain drops which are good but uh, too cute I think I took out the altars. This matchup is too fast for the meal plan to matter. Took out the voices because if I'm bringing in a lot of interactive spells, a lot of cheap removals, then uh, I don't really need to filter through the deck so much. I instead of uh, casting a tormented voice, I can just cast a removal spell that turn. So the matchup is quite okay. Also, uh, because of Eldraza decks and stuff like this, and uh, to some extent, blue decks too. And not only I have like three Duruses in my board, but two transgressed in mind, which definitely coming this match, and definitely not Durus because his deck is very creature heavy. Even though he's not playing Kalaka Company, but there are very few spells in his deck in general even after sideboard because he's never bringing too many spells anyways so duress is kinda dead here but transgressive mind is uh, amazing here because uh, while he does have mystic on two to speed up the process but his deck is a lot about a bunch of free and four drops so even if I am on the draw turn to transgress still takes out his first uh, frat I think I was wondering whether I keep this hand no it was a apparently a very quick keep I think I had it to turn to untap to land into transgress so he was just uh, short cutting here because he's fetching something with the heath bloodstained mire so I can fetch a basic here and cast one of the two drop allies but I think instead of doing that, yeah, I think that was the game where instead of uh, starting to get some board states, uh, I just cast a... Oh no, really? Really? Okay, okay, maybe it was the third game of this match. Maybe it was the third game. I suppose my logic was that unless he has a... Well, I can take Mystic with Transgress anyway and then I can still transgress the ne uh, next turn yeah so mystic just like he ordered comes down now I get to transgress him and of turn fetching probably a cinder glade the mana base is really awkward in this deck but that's, that's what you can do luckily both green fetches in this deck uh, I mean, for the hills and uh, heaves can grab a green-white duel. 
Knuckle Blade Mantis Rider, Stubborn Denial, I uh, Icefall Regent, and I believe that's Thunderbreak Regent. So, uh, take out the Knuckle Blade, because he, uh, with the Mystic, he still can't cast the Mantis Rider next turn because of that basic forest while he could have uh, cast an echo blade and the rest of the stuff in his hand uh, costs 4 plus so that's the thing he has to top deck an echo blade off the top which is actually uh not that terrible because I think I have a bunch of removal in my hand so yeah fetch an end of turn for cinder glade If not ultimate price, I definitely should consider running some murderous cat maybe in the deck because I run like at least 10, no, 11 fetches in the deck. 3 heaths, 4 foothills, I think, and uh, 4 mires. <coughs> so cracking a heath for planes here. Because it's just a second basic right now. Abs and Charmin away the knuckle blade before he gets to untap and maybe wreck my ass with a stubborn denial. Which I, uh, I think I know it's in his hands. Yeah, there is at least one. Plus, that also plays around him, uh, just simply tapping out to bounce it into his hand. <coughs> Anyways, I knew about the denial, so that was the right play there. He passed the turn, nothing going on for him for now. Really stumbling on mana despite having a mana dork in play. But three is not enough, especially with basic forest and mantis right in. In hand, uh, I think that's a safe attack with the Cluster Healer. Uh, simply because he would never trade there. Uh, I forgot about the denial this instance. So, uh, I flashed in uh, Apo Sage here into his denial. Which was, to be honest, a p bit of a mistake. Not absolutely terrible, but still. I could have cast something juicier than that. On the other hand, this way he doesn't get to counter my next big thing. <coughs> Which in this case is the unified front, draining him for four. Uh, here I could have maybe attacked with the healer. And I think he wouldn't block it. But... Um, I don't know, here it's like more tricky than that. I think he would probably block here. Uh, and, uh, I know, I mean, not block. So he got a Thunder Break, which is a bit annoying, but I'm at 22, he's at 12. Uh, with Healer still alive, I get to do a bunch of Mambo Jumbo, so I cast a pair of... Um, Zillapur cut throws training for a couple more life. Now, if he ever gets to attack with the ground guys, he's in a lot of trouble. He would be in the, in the world of pain. And this also means that uh, my next attacks are pretty uh, awkward for him as well. I 
I didn't really mention in a lot of places where I talked about this deck that yeah you, instead of green you could possibly uh, splash for blue but <clears throat> then you can't play stuff like Absentrum for example and I don't know like what you would want in the deck instead then if you would be this kind of four color good stuff I think you would rather be like on Dark Jeskai but then you'd need Jaces after all only things that come to mind like as a bonus for splashing blue in this token stack is to uh, have stuff like dispel, negate, things of that nature but nothing else really speaks to me and Amazon Charm is just uh, a good flexible card all modes are relevant having an instant speed removal for stuff including big Eldrazi monsters is I think a huge plus um, he's attacking with the flyer, smashed in for 7 but that put me down to, uh, just to 17 uh, that was the uh, the oof. I forgot the name, but anyway, the land that for six step and sack puts three signs into play. Uh, anyways, I cast Butcher, but now I'm thinking like how to attack here. So at the beginning of combat, uh, it's one of the allies that drains him for two uh, to give Butcher haste and then just attacking with the whole team because at any point, if he decides to block something that I don't like him to block. I could just eat it or eat something else. Um, yeah. Here, no matter like how he blocks, he does have like couple of mana. But even if he has something like Draconic Roar, uh, I think he still dies. He's forced to champ Butcher with the Mantis Rider here, and um, he wants to trade here with the Mystic. But. Anyways, here, uh, just uh, he's taking the co damage from combat and takes a bunch of damage from the guys that died, etc. So, definitely not hard to deal seven here, that's for sure. There could be a chance that something like Mardu Aristocrats or some other black green or black blue or absent rally or four color rally. Uh, well, not just a chance, but definitely, uh, definitely a fact that those decks will be more competitive and uh, more efficient, I think, because there are so more. Uh, so much more streamlined but this one is a ton of fun and opponents will never expect like what is coming next and um, while aristocrats are really decks uh, are normally favored in a matchup against control decks this one is taking the fight to the next level because of the altar and um, I don't know, this this deck is just too sweet, too sweet. It's not ready for a big tournament play, but it's definitely fine for an Ephedim and uh yeah I might consider it for the off of the Gatewitch game day. I don't know. One one day of practicing with the deck is not a huge sample of cause. But uh, something felt too raw with the deck, I think. But it's definitely much more fun than just playing Aristocrats or Rally.
And it's not just about the Altar. There are a few more funny things in the deck. Like the uh, the six and six drops and the seven drop. Seven drop vampire, that's the four or five that uh makes them lose life when you gain life in the deck with healers and cutthroats and the land that gives life and the uh, six mana ally angel that gives you life it's actually a f uh, like legitimate win condition yes they're gonna kill it but you can bring it back with mortuary mire unless they exile it and uh, if you feel like in this matchup like that card won't shine at all even if it gets to stick then you can always just pitch it to tormenting voice so there is that angle uh, there is a fill there is sovereign, a and the sovereign also is a one off just to troll people because this deck can easily gain huge chunks of life especially with the lands you could sometimes just have some tokens on board then uh, lay down the land that makes free science crack that next turn draw and crack the land that gains you two life for each creature you control and then you play like Felder and Sovereign and if they're like an attack like Absent Aggro if they don't draw their Absent Charm or murderous cuts then that's it because of the life gain you can take some damage with tokens you can uh, chomp for a while etc so legitimate strategy to win against absent aggro lumbering falls turn one from the team or weight or four color dragons if you want to call it this way uh, the only dragons are Thunderbreak and Icefall, which is still fine. Cracking Foothills at the, on my turn, I think, just to save time, yeah, for Canopy Vista. At the table nearby, some of her friends are playing out their match. Uh, on his turn, just to save time, he's cracking the foothills for the Cinder Glades. Simple because he didn't have a turn to play. And that does happen in standard right now. Swamp into Transgress the Mind. Think I s so that's two lands, Shun Roof and Heath, Knuckle Blade, Draconic Roar, and the, uh, and the Plains. So yeah. I left him with three lands and the Draconic Roar. Which is very odd that he kept it in the deck. Very surprising. It's just tokens or like healers or uh, cutthroats, which I guess he still want, wants to kill. Just so that uh, he doesn't take too much uh, damage from them through tokens and such. Healer. On my turn three with uh, marsh tapped just passing no reason to roar healer just yet uh, if you didn't draw a creature he could always just uh, kill it in response to something uh, she wonder if I knew all about okay apparently he drew something and uh, yeah that's the Beast Colors event. Uh, he's over to drop to accelerate into Wanderer and Thunder Break regions and such. Cutthroat comes down. He lets it come in, although I think he may wanted to uh, roar it away <coughs> in response now he kills it so drain and one is not a oh actually 
yeah this is uh, because he didn't draw in response now he actually took two damage for no reason so I, uh, and I get rid of his guy by uh, self-inflicted wounds because that card probably wouldn't get better moving on and I didn't want to trade with my cutthroat which can do a whole lot more So he's taking one from the Shion Reef and just smashing in for free damage with the falls. Which is okay. I'm still in the uh in the race. And winning the race. So cast the healer which trained for one and then attacked for one. So he's down at a ten. Opponent is down to 10. And if my stuff dies, he takes more damage. No reason yet to chomp uh, Lumbering Falls, for example. Beast Caller 7, it's a bit too late to the party. And because it's just a 1 1, I can safely attack into it with the healer. Yeah, so bashing in with the healer. He goes to nine. Laying down another land. I still can't. Well, uh, I can uh, still crack the uh, the step to gain four life here. If I would really want to. Because I took out so many high drops, it doesn't matter that much anymore to have uh, super many lands uh, he attacked with the rider boy he's losing the damage raise now I can't really quad attack unless I get to kill the rider somehow okay uh, the uh, spawning bat joins the party that's the land that for 6 in a tap and sacrifice makes free science I got enough mana to crack it now he attacks with the rider. I fall down to 14 and the turn make free science. Which I can sacrifice for mana at any point to drain for free. A very crucial thing. Now the step actually does a whole lot of work gaining me a bunch of life. Specifically 10 right now. Well now it actually gains me uh, gains me 12 healer comes down drains for one and, uh, and thanks to another healer so that's two drains I should have uh, cracked the fetch maybe before I played the healer uh, anyways I would get the mana from the science if there would be some wicked response So yeah, correct the fetch now, he can't really catch me. Well, yeah, I would basically gain two less life, but still... I could activate the land. No responses from him, he's kind of flooded. Not drawn into big butts. thinking which way I want to play here I'm not comfortable attacking just yet into two blockers with the science so I'm gonna wait a turn at any point I can just uh, cash in those science for three points of drain smashed in with rider put me down to 12 then casts a uh, 
Thunderbreak region using the Savants, which uh, should have warned me to be more suspicious. He also left the mana for exactly one specific card, which is one of the few spells that costs more than one in, or two in his deck. Uh, now I'm casting self-inflicting winds, which is not great. He's gonna eat the the mana dork, but takes two in the process. Um, I somehow didn't pay attention to his uh, mana tapping, and now I'm gonna be somewhat punished for that. At least I don't uh, attack with the cutthroat. Uh, so now what he does, he's gonna take one from the reef, but after he's blocking with the flyers both of the healers, so Jeskai Charm and uh, Pump and Lifelink for his guys. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. Still a bit sick. Don't. I'm better now, thank you. Um. Yeah, so I let him gain a bunch of life. But because of the cutthroat, he still took some damage. And also, free damage from the science. So even after lifelink, he's down at 9. So perhaps that attack was okay. Because he would use up the charm next turn anyway. During attacks, if I would have just uh, passed the turn. I think in order to play around possible nonsense he probably would have done that. Well Mantis Finder of course doesn't tap but uh, opponent is demoralized at this point a little bit. Um, I didn't block with anything and still ended up at 16. Because I've been draining quite a bit this game. No blockers, nothing much going on for him. Possibly on my turn, so attack with the Zoloport and two tokens and keeping one at bay. Uh, just to be able to chum block the Lumbering Falls in case he would, I don't know, draw into another Jeskai Charm or something like this. Though, even attack with the falls plus Jessica Charms, I believe, is not lethal. Two points short of lethal. Uh, I think he attacked. No. I think he's kept attacking with the flyers. Uh, probably just attacked with the Mantis Rider and gave me the turn. Now it's time for the retreat to Emeria to shine. That resolves. I get to land drop and now I'm thinking what to do here. I have the option of making a uh, token. Yeah, this is what I do this turn, it seems. So I suppose I was hoping to draw another land, preferably a fetch land, so that next turn I can pump my guys twice with the retreat. So he would need like double Jessica Charm to kill me here, or what was it, two Draconic Roars? Cause he's at seven, so attacking for seven with the Flyers, I oh, know, but at the same time even if he would have like two draconic roars, uh, I would be able to eat the science to gain some life. So even two draconic roars wouldn't kill me. A card which I suppose he trimmed down some numbers at least, if not took him all out. No, yeah, he played one this game and played it at the wrong time. Now I drew the second uh, Blighted Stab 
So I get to gain but a lot of life again. The numbers on the step and the spawning bed are two and one respectively. And I feel really uh, weird about playing more. Because the carless lands are so bad for this deck with four colors and so on. Not many double cost, but there is the front which ones converge, etc. So I started with a bunch of those lands and then trimmed them down in favor of more colored sources, extra basics here and there, extra fetch here and there. So I gained a bunch of life first and then went to attacks and I think from the land which was the step that entered this turn I triggered retreat to pump my team and uh, yeah like he had the volley in his hand which was also a stupid one uh, I don't know I think he saw something weird that he wanted to kill I don't remember what was it Okay, the angel. Maybe the angel was the thing. But still, angel is not great in this matchup. Too slow. So there you have it. So I attack with the team. Uh, two damage goes through. And then I just sacrifice the tokens to finish him off. Basically, that's about it. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. But check out the website. Check out the articles. Uh, stay tuned for more standard videos and the, uh, a big, uh, well not a big, moderately sized overview through um, everything that has happened to standard and modern in the last few weeks with the new stat and the bannings and so on. I know there have been a lot of material and a lot of content from everybody covering that stuff. But we're gonna uh, basically provide our own perspective, uh, hopefully bring you some new information and uh, we would like to focus on the questions like what's next. So if uh, this is uh, what it is in, uh, in terms of for example bands and modern, uh, some decks are obviously gonna be pushed up but then how you're gonna let's say in modern or in standard with a lot of Eldrazi stuff as well how you're gonna address that thing which seems like an obvious answer okay uh goodbye cheers mates bro signing off